I have always wanted to do this for a video, but it's been a little bit daunting because configuring Elk, Elastic, Logstash, Kibana, this whole structure and setup for a seam solution or sim, however you pronounce it, can be a little bit, I don't know, a lot of moving pieces, right? So I'm excited, I'm stoked, I'm super happy to be able to do this with the help of John Strand's courses, his introductory labs that are freely available all online. Just as a gentle reminder, you can always be jumping into any of John Strand's and anti-siphon training and Black Hills information security and this awesome tribe of companies pay what you can training. If you haven't seen it, it's just literally courses, education, free training that you can choose the price tag for. But if you take a look, they do have some incredible courses coming up like their active defense and cyber deception course and tons and tons more. There's things that you could learn all about making hackers earn their access and making them cry when you're wasting their time, doing some great defense in depth and tons of great stuff from John Strand. Well, he's always putting out a lot of these pay what you can training. If you haven't registered for these before, you just cruise through it. Hey, fill out whatever forms you need to. But when you get down to the price section, look, you can pay the minimum you can pay 50, you can pay 95, but if you want to bring this down even lower to make it more accessible for you, if you just don't have the cash, it is pay what you can. So for tuition assistance, you can click here and then you'll get a new form where all of those pricing options go away and you just register and you sign up and that's it. You can make this course free accessible to you. There are tons of other pay what you can courses and it's always worth just taking a look at what is anti-siphon training up to? What is Black Hills information security up to? And hey, how can I jump into Wild West Hacking Fest? They're conference. Anyway, let's get into their publicly accessible and free introductory labs that are part of these pay what you can courses. You can find them online just on GitHub, Strand.js intro labs. And in the past couple of videos, we set up a virtual machine where we've gotten a chance to play with a lot of these labs, but there are so many that you can just cruise through. So in this video, I wanna get into Elk, Elastic, Logstash, Kibana, and this is a three-part series for their walkthrough, for their write-ups of the labs, but I wanna cram this all into one video. So look, they get into the good stuff. We're setting up a seam and you could also toggle on rules to alert us when defenders are attacking our organization, what tradecraft, what TTPs from the MITRE attack framework and all are they all up to. But this is awesome. You can get started with Elk using the Elastic Cloud just 14 day trial. Doesn't require a credit card. You just need an email and a password. And all we do is just set up a free account. So I'm gonna do it. Jumping over to this URL, this is all it takes. Just start your free Elastic Cloud trial. Let me fill out my email address, choose a password and then sign up with email, nice and easy. Now we can just cruise through a super simple form. Hey, I'll just put my name, company is self. Uh, I am new to Elastic and I'm more interested in security. I'd like to just learn more about Elastic. Let's do it. All right, now we need to create a new deployment. I can just call mine, I don't know, security deployment. How about that? Uh, we could change some of the settings, but I think I'm just fine with the defaults. Let's go ahead and create our deployments and cool. Oh, wow, we have 150 days left of our trial. Goodness, it's more than 14. Okay, now it's doing its thing. It is creating our deployment, doing whatever configuration things that it needs. We could cruise through with the tour, um, but I don't really need to do that. I just kind of want to go back to my deployment. Um, oh, shoot. And it showed me credentials. Can I get back to that? These root credentials are shown only once. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll just check the frame of the video, maybe. <laughs> And it is still creating the deployment, the video is cruising through, but I have now seen, after a little bit of time, the Kibana menu open up in the navigation. So, kind of taking a look at what the lab suggests, we should be able to go ahead and open up Kibana, and once this thing finishes up, we can go ahead and move on with the lab here. Okay, now this has popped up. Looks like I have my Kibana instance up and running. Um, I can edit the configuration. I can... Play with monitoring the health here. Copy endpoint. Can I just open this? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, now we're going somewhere new. All right, now we've loaded up Kibana, seemingly, or we're still in Elastic, but let me go ahead and manage this deployment and I could move down to, okay, security management, ooh, fleet. Fleet is what I'm looking for. That is what is suggested next in the lab. And we want to be able to add an agent here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this add agent button and then adding Elastic agents to your hosts allows it to collect data and send it to the Elastic stack. Okay, what type of host are you adding? Were they're controlled by an agent policy, creating new policy to get started? Um, I realize my face is in the way. Uh, the advanced options, no, I think that's all just fine. I'm gonna assume 
them again, totally defaults are good. I'll let create policy and then we'll be able to allow the other options to enroll in fleet and install the elastic agent will all be done for me. Cool, yep, okay, seemingly good. We will enroll in fleet. Install the elastic agent on your host. Ooh, okay, we will toggle this to Windows and that should be all good for me. I'll just wanna copy the syntax and then the lab suggests, hey, we just save this. We just take note of it so we know how we can go ahead and install this when the time comes. But then we'll move into part two of this little lab walkthrough and that way we'll be able to actually install and configure the elastic agent. So let me just open up notepad. I suppose that's fine and I'll paste this in. <laughs> So it looks like this syntax, like the PowerShell code that they give here, is just everything that you need to actually download the Elastic Agent, expand the archive, like decompress the zip file, and then install the Elastic Agent. Uh, I think we could basically skip over what would be lab number two here on installing the whole agent. So let me go ahead and copy the syntax and I'll open up a, a Windows terminal. I'll hit Control Shift Enter on my keyboard so that I can open this up in the admin mode. I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this and I suppose I will make a direct directory for like elastic. So at least this is kind of clean and not just randomly in my user profile. Now I'll go ahead and paste all this in because there's currently nothing in the path here and I'll let it download the elastic agent for me. Now that that's done, it's gonna try and decompress the zip archive, expand archive in PowerShell. Okay, and now it's gonna go ahead and install the agent. It says the elastic agent will be installed in C, program files, elastic agent, and will run as a service. Do you wanna continue? Let's hit Y for yes, enter that and let it do its thing. Okay, it took a little bit, but uh, looks like it says successfully triggered restart on running Elastic Agents, successfully enrolled the Elastic Agent. The Elastic Agent has been successfully installed. Awesome, let me clear the screen here. Toggling back over to Elastic over in the web browser, you can see, hey, one agent has been enrolled, incoming data is confirmed, and we are ingesting everything that we need. We can click on that view enrolled agent, and here it is, there's my desktop host name. Now I can click on this and go take a look at what is all coming from this? Here's the last activity, last check-in message, agent policy that we define, the agent version, platform. Okay, so now in the intro labs walkthrough, we basically just jumped over what would be part two, and now we can move on to part three, where we're chatting about what data we might ingest into Elastic, and they say, look, by default, Windows logs are not ideal, because it's just kind of a smorgasbord of whatever actually comes through for it, and some things might not actually be audited by default. So to get logs that are more readable and useful, we can use, and we should be using Sysmon. By the way, you'll practically like never ever find a client organization and environment that is actually using and has deployed Sysmon, but when you do, if you do, it's awesome. <laughs> We can follow this link to download Sysmon. It is part of the tool sets that are created by Mark Rosanovich. Let me open this up in a new tab here. I can scroll down and click the download Sysmon. And now I do have that zip archive once more. Let's move back to our uh, administrative PowerShell window and move into the downloads directory. Oh, forgive me, that should be downloads. And I know, look, yeah, I could probably do this all in one command, but I just like typing CD over and over again. Uh, so let's get our sysmon.zip file that I see there. Let's go ahead and expand and archive, just as we saw in the Elastic Agent syntax, to go ahead and extract this zip archive. And now we should have a Sysmon directory, as we do. So let's move into that directory. And I have the Sysmon64 that we probably want to run on our 64-bit architecture. We can go ahead and run our Sysmon64.exe. Failed to start the service, the operation completed successfully. What does that mean? <laughs> Uh, what does the lab suggest? Okay, they uh, end up using Sysmon on its own, tack I, tack N, and accept EULA. Is tack I to install? Is there like a tack H for help? Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, the usage, we can install with Sysmon tack I. What is tack N? Was that even a thing? Uh, it doesn't seem to be anymore anyway. So let me use that Sysmon 64 tack I. Sysmon is already registered and install Sysmon before reinstalling. Okay, so we're good. Like it's just doing its thing right now. Can I get service? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there is 64-bit uh, Sysmon running as a service. So I'm assuming all is good. And now that Sysmon is running on our system, we need to configure our Elastic Agent to configure and gather these logs. Sign into your account, navigate back to Kibana, move into Fleet, and then check out the integrations as to what agents might be pulling stuff in. Then we can add the integration for Windows and then toggle on the button for Sysmon. Uh, let's go try it out. So back in Kibana as part of our Elk stack, we'll move over to Fleet and I don't see any integrations. 
Oh, 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 if we go into agent policies, you can click in on the policy that you've defined and now in the integrations is there. Let me see if I can add integration and I'm gonna assume I would be able to browse for Windows. There's a whole lot of entries here. Uh, let me just go ahead and search for it. Let me search for Windows. There we go. Click on Windows. I just wanna scroll down into this overview. Does it actually give me a little bit more like Sysmon specifically? I don't know, let's try it. Let me just add Windows, there we go and uh, Integration name is Windows 1, forwarded PowerShell, PowerShell operational. Oh, Sysmon operational. Okay, perfect. I think all of this looks good. We can add it to existing hosts with the agent policy one. And let me click the bottom right button that my face is in the way. Save and continue. Save and deploy changes. I'm good with that. Okay, Windows 1 integration added. Now our agent policy one has system integration and Windows. Perfect. Uh, let me go take a look back at our fleet. Let's check our agent. And we should see that it is working with the Windows integration and can pull from uh, Sysmon just as well. Now it says, hey, play around on the computer that has the Elastic Agent installed, move files around, create files, start program, make a few Google searches. This will generate some logs to ensure we have Sysmon logs reaching our cloud. After you've created some log activities, you can navigate to Kibana Discover. Well, okay, uh, let me get back to, I suppose, our... Uh, little command line here. Let's just fire up the calculator, of course. That's normal uh, operations. Can I run like, who am I? I don't know if that'll do anything. Um, I don't know, should I just open up WordPad? How about that? Is that gonna run? Is it in the path? How do you access WordPad? PowerShell probably just didn't know where the heck it was, whatever. Uh, so hopefully we have some Sysmon log events now. I think a Sysmon process start is just one. When you've created a process, uh, the event ID for Sysmon is one. So if we navigate back to Kibana, move into the discover dashboard, set the source to logs, then we can look at the time constraint for today. Uh, let me go back to the little hamburger menu. And let's go to discover. Let's set our uh, data view source to logs. We'll set this to today as it is, good. And now I need to go figure out and find what fields would be worthwhile to search for. Uh, our agent name is probably worthwhile because I wanna get the things from our desktop, good. And if I put this in the documents view, then it'll actually show it with the timestamp. Uh, can I get any specific like process names that are started? We have event action that might be worth adding. Okay, not a whole lot of entries there. DNS queries, interesting. Ooh, process create, process create. That is good. That's gotta be an event ID that comes with that, right? Okay, event ID, let me add this. A lot of those are empty, even on process create. So that's dumb. Are there any processes that we can run? Ooh, even PowerShell stuff though, that could be worthwhile. Process, ooh, okay, process command line. Let me add this. Okay, now, can I see us trying to run? Ooh, yeah, I can. Here's my WordPad. Excellent. Here's who am I, as I just type those in the command line. And calc. Oh, check it out. Here's us trying to run Sysmon. <laughs> oh, the lab actually says you can set a filter on your data to limit the results just to Sysmon data. That can be done by setting the data stream .data set field for windows.sysmon operational. Uh, okay, we can try that. Okay, so add filter. Um, we wanted data stream dot data set is and then windows dot sysmon operational right let's add filter okay cool so it was looking at the same sort of stuff that we were looking at just a moment ago and check it out there is our process create wordpad who am i in calc nice so if we wanted to filter that even more i think we could do like uh what is it it's win log event id can be uh, colon one, right? So it's setting to a value of one and that should be the, uh, I don't I don't want an and, I just want that, please. Can I do that? Go, filter. Yeah, okay, so now we're only getting the process create and you can see Sysmon, you can see uh, Elastic Stack and the agent coming together. That is super duper cool and that can help us do some further analysis with an elk. And that is that. That is three of the kind of written GitHub free labs, part of the introductory courses of John Strand, Anti-Siphon Training, Black Hills Information Security, all of their pay what you can courses. And really, really cool that we finally just got an opportunity to spin up Elk because now we can do a little bit more of that, you know, sweet stuff. Detection engineering, I don't know, tracking around an EDR and a scene to see what logs are happening, where, when, and how. All the stuff that can help you 
for your job and like the real world in the industry. I hope that's pretty cool. I hope that is actually tactical uh, information security education. So, hey, check out Black Hills Information Security, Anti-Siphon Training, Pay What You Can courses, all the incredible stuff that John Stern is up to. And thank you so much for watching this video. Hope it was fun. Hope you learned something new. Hope we had a great time together. And I'll see you in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Become a member. Become a member of the channel. It really, really helps support all the stuff that we're doing here. Thanks again.